Welcome to the UFC Face Off for BT Sport. I'm Adam Catterall. You know who these two are, the common event at UFC London. Arnold Holland, Dan Hooker, great to be in their presence. Now, normally when we do stuff like this, you want a bit of animosity, you want a bit of needle, you want a bit of nastiness. However, I've interviewed both of these gentlemen before. They are the nicest dudes in the UFC. Or so they proceed to be. Uh, we're going to have a little bit of a chat. We're going to talk about uh, themselves. Maybe they will go back and forth. Maybe they won't go back and forth. But I know that there'll be an awful lot of respect uh, between them uh, by the time we get to this conversation ending. Um, I'm just going to stir the pot, boys. All right, Arnold, I, w- I was chatting to Dan before, yeah? yeah? And he says, that tash makes you look like <laughs> a 70s adult film star, mate. Oh, That's mate. What... I've had worse than that. <laughs> what do you make of his tash? We're standing at the low hanging fruit, aren't we? Well, I've got, I've got, I'm going, I'm going straight. My question is, is this the, is this the only freeway we're doing on the card, or are you doing up to other fighters? Just just you guys. You're the most interesting. You're the most interesting in the club. I thought it was, I thought it was opposite of that. I thought it was because we were the least interesting that you needed to group us together. You know that that's not the case. You know that that you are the most interesting. In, in all seriousness, you're now obviously stepping down. In weight, back down to 145. Yes. Thought process behind that first and foremost. Um. I feel like it was always in the plan for me, like long term. I feel like my initial. Um, like I'm pretty honest with myself, and when I first come into the UFC, I took the opportunity, and I I chased it. I went out of my way to chase the opportunity. I campaigned to get on. Uh, the card of my hometown to make the debut in the UFC. I knew, like, skill-wise, it was too early at the time. But I, I, I just wanted to be in the UFC. I wanted to be a UFC fighter. Because I knew that I had the, I had the courage to pick myself back up. Like, I, I, my plan is going a lot better than I initially... I thought I would have, like, three different... Run- I thought this series I'm going through now would be, like, three different runs in the UFC. Mm-hmm. I thought <laughs> I thought I'd get in, make that run, probably get cut, fight out, get back in, make that second run, come back in and then make the chase towards the title. So it's going people, you know, they they can judge it how they want to judge it, but it's going a lot better than my initial plan as an eighteen year old. So um but yeah I kind of view that first run at Featherweight as like uh my internship. That's like my my apprenticeship as so you will then the move up to um Lightweight, just getting that, that experience up. I feel like I took every fight, took on every challenge that mm. I could possibly take on. Um, had, had a lot of very valuable experiences um, throughout that run in, in um, the lightweight division. And now it's time to come back down and, and I feel like it's like, a comp- it's, the comp- it's like an accumulation of all of that experience and all of that learning and growing process. So it's yeah, I feel like it's um, it's always been in in my plan to be at the stage that I'm at right now, coming back uh, to the featherweight division to make a yeah as like a completed version of myself. What have you what have you made of his run in the UFC? Yeah, it's pretty impressive, isn't it? You watch the highlight reels, can't not be entertained. It's fun fun to watch. It's beat a lot of top guys, you know. He's legit legend, you know. Nothing bad to say about that. Are you surprised that he's taking you on his first step back down to 145? No, I'm number six in the division. Well, seven, I think. I don't know. Seven, I'm number seven. I'm ranked top ten. It's six. We're all with six. We're six. It's number six. But, yeah, so, yeah, he's coming down. And like he says, he's, he's always had a plan to come back. I think number eight at lightweight. So, yeah, why wouldn't you want to come up against the top guys? So. What's the reason? for picking Arnold this weekend or taking the fight with Arnold this weekend, especially in the UK where... Ah, oh, jumps up eight fight win streak. That's um, like definitely his, his position um, in the rankings. But regardless of, of where he sits in the rankings, like an eight, there's no, it's undeniable that someone on an eight fight win streak in the UFC is not positioning themselves for a title shot. That's, that's completely undeniable. So when I... I didn't come down here to make up numbers or make money or anything like that. I come down here to make my way towards the title. We're all, we're all chasing the same thing, um, and that's like the ultimate like ambition hmm. of your career is, is to hold that belt. So yeah, we're both just after the same thing, I guess. That's why it's 
like uh, yeah, like this kind of interactions quite it's quite funny because it's it's not about um, like it's not like the other ones I've seen like I've seen ones in boxing and um, and it's like a like a hostile kind of tension mm -hmm. to 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 me it's not about like a conflict with Arnold like he's it's it's more of like me challenging myself. So I, I of course I respect that, uh, Arnold for taking the like we both just want the same thing. That's what the sport comes down to. But there's yeah, uh, in terms of thinking about Arnold or what I think about his career or what I think about him, like that's not my focus. My focus is on myself. Like obviously <laughs> I've researched and studied and my coaches have looked into like his his game and his body and that sort of stuff, but like his mind and where he's at in his life and what his granny thinks is like not not like a priority of mine my priority is is it, this close to the fight is is really focusing on myself when you look though so yeah. now you got some explaining to you You're, why are we all here <laughs> that's my producers there. <laughs> yeah, that's it but when you look at his run like you said it's an eight fight win streak and you look at the level of opponent that you've been in with has he been in with guys that you've been in with um I say it's just uh, different, like different. Obviously, he just um, like the only thing that's missing from his career is like those marquee names, is those big names. Like I would say, skill wise, he's definitely been in there with some, you know, some high level fighters, some very good fighters. Um, but yeah, they didn't have that that marquee name value. Hmm. So I've, like, I can see why he took the fight. You know why I took the fight? He's, his win streak. You can see why he took the fight. Because it's, uh, like, let's say for the UFC, it's a win-win. They even get a guy on an eight-fight win streak who then beats a guy with a name. Mm -hmm. Or they get a guy with a name who, who takes his win streak. So it's, that's, they, the UFC is good at what they do. They, they, it's a, they paint a win-win situation for themselves. Is he the most dangerous guy? That you yeah. would have been in with? 100%, 100%. You know, coming down from the weight above, he's got knockouts over all the top names. People that are doing well now are weight above that. So, yeah, 100%. And, like, the body, the frame, that's a different problem as well, you know? Like, even, yeah, it's definitely the most dangerous guy. Yeah. I know it's obvious to, to the majority of fans what he does well. Mm. What do you think he does well? It does a lot well. <laughs> it does a lot very well. You know, his strike is world class. His wrestling is good. He's shown it in recent fights. Submission games, hot. Are we allowed to swear? You could do what you want. I'm yeah, sure, sure, so, mate. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So the lot, it's got a full package, and uh, but I've got that too. So we're both going to bring it. We've both got the whole game. You're going to see a real good MMA fight. You know, and uh, yeah, that's it. How how over the last two years, three years, how frustrated? Have you been, as, as Dan said, you've been on this streak and you've been waiting for the right names, the right calibre mm. uh, of opponent in order to propel your name yeah. further forward. Now it's here, now it's on obviously home soil, but it's yeah, been yeah. a frustrating period, I've no doubt, before yeah. you got to this point. Uh, yeah, but it kind, of, kind of like the same what Dan said. But when I got to UFC, I was 21 and I was probably not ready for that next step. And I was, you know, forced to slow down, whatever, injury, stupid stuff. And fortunately, it's kind of worked out, you know. In that period, I've, I've got better, 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 and taken my time without having to take that damage and take them losses. And uh, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm not one of those guys that are ever out the gym. I'm always in the gym, whether I'm injured, training with one hand, no hands, you know, whatever it is. Mm. I'm always trying to improve. I'm always trying to get better. So a year layoff or whatever it is, it, it doesn't matter. I'm improving. I'm making improvements. So yeah. Last year you won one of our awards for the anytime, anywhere, any place. That type of attitude obviously resonates massively with our audience. We, we're big fans of what you've done, but how much of a toll does that take on you, not only as a martial artist, but also as a, as a man physically and what have you, to have that attitude flying around the world, especially during this pandemic, being away from your family and all those types of things. How hard has it been over the last two years to, to maintain a career in the UFC? It's been... Um yeah, like it's been challenging, but I'm definitely up for the challenge. Like it's it's 
it is tough. It is tough for sure. And it's kind of stuff you, you block out and you can like obviously construct answers so you can kind of shine people away. But it definitely, like now, now I get to go home after the fight. Mm. And um, I don't think, of course people understood, but I don't think they really understood like how big of a weight that is to be lifted off your shoulders. Especially when you get in the type of fights that I get into. It's not like you go home, take a couple of days off, and then you're all right. Like, it can take people. It's, it's the aspect of the sport and the way that I fight that people don't see. Because it doesn't, it's not a, like, you put a Instagram post up once a week and people are like, oh, yeah, yeah, now he looks all right. Yeah. But it can take, from fights out there, it can take months to, to fully get back to where you were after some of those wars. Um, so to not be able to go home and to be going into um, with a mentality like that and a fight like that, that is difficult. So now to have that lifted and regardless of what happens, to be able to go home and to be around my friends and be around my family and be around the people that can, yeah, just, just support you, like your entire support system mm. um, and get back to that straight away is something else. Like to... To be in some of those positions uh, after the fights like you had and just to be sitting in a hotel room for, for months on end by yourself is, <laughs> is difficult. Yeah. It's definitely challenging. But it definitely, it definitely made me, definitely calloused me even more and, and made me um, evaluate what I wanted and, and why I wanted it even more. So I feel like I feel like I got what I needed out of that period of my career, even though I took some losses and there was um, some highs, some lows, some backwards, some forwards. Um, it's, all, it's all for a reason, and everything, everything has to be... Um, I wouldn't be the fight I am sitting here today mm. and, and for the rest of my career if I hadn't gone through that. So I'm, I'm, it's difficult for people to understand, but I'm thankful that I went through those difficult times because it strengthened me um, to a level that a lot of other fighters wouldn't, couldn't understand. It's a, it's a very singular world, isn't it? The world of the fight. I mean, yourself, we've spoken in the past about your training regime. You live in East Anglia, but you're willing to get on the motorways in the early hours of the morning to drive a few hours hmm. to Birmingham, drive back, do another session, and then repeat that throughout the course of the day. As Dan's hmm. just been explaining there, flying around the world to take to take fights, yeah. these are the sacrifices that you make in order to get to the top. Yeah, no, we all want to be the best in the world, don't we? Like, we both want to be world champion, and if we ain't prepared to do them things and make them sacrifices, then we might as well stop now, you know, might as well give up. So, yeah, do whatever it takes. If the best training's four hours away, I'm driving four hours away. So, yeah, if there's a flight away, if I have to sleep in a shed somewhere, I don't know, we'll, we'll do what it takes, and that's it. How much are you looking forward to fighting in front of home fans again at the weekend? Yeah, big time, big time. It's been, what, three years since it's been back? Yep. Yeah, three years. London crowd's always one of the best, so I'm looking forward to that. And I think three years with no events, things are open, as open as they can be. So, yeah, it's going to be good. I'm sure you have plenty of good interactions with uh, British MMA fans as well. We appreciate, obviously, elite level mixed martial arts. I'm sure you're looking forward as well to walking out in front of a, a packed 20,000 at the O2 Arena, an iconic arena here on British Yeah, Channel. I didn't even know that it was um, like it was here when I took the flight. I got back, I landed back in New Zealand after being away for four, over four and a half months. And I was like, finally back. And I was in a quarantine. I had to do like 10 days quarantine in a hotel. Um, I was like, in the second day, and then I get a message from Sean, you want to fight Arnold <laughs> Allen? And I was thinking, oh, and I, because Kai, Kai, my teammate fights next weekend, so I was like, can we push it to next weekend? And he's like, nah, nah, it has to be on that date. And I was like, no, oh, shit, all right then, we'll see you there. And then it was about a week, and then I told my coaches or told like a couple of people around me, and they're like, oh, you're on the yeah. London card. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> I was thinking, it's far away. <laughs> but once, once it all got announced, and it was like the amount of, um, the amount of UK fans that were sending me messages and just being like pumped, like pumped to have you come over and put on a show. We love to see you fight, and and in the flesh is going to be incredible. Uh, that just made me excited for it, just to see 
all the fans' excitement around the fight and all the fans' excitement around coming over and then being able to see you fight in the flesh, um, which is like a once-in-a-lifetime, I guess, um, made me just excited. So I've heard about the O2. I've had some, I've had some pretty cool experiences. And like that's the only one I can compare it to is like our home fans and our side of the world and our Victor mm. Arena, our um, you know Brisbane and Sydney and Melbourne. Like there's what was that like fifty six thousand people yeah, yeah. in yeah just short in yeah in uh, in Melbourne like that that's pretty incredible. They're pretty loud. They go good. So that's the bar. Um, that's the bar. That's the bar that I'm holding the UK fans to. They better be just as loud. Or, or I'm packing my bags and going. <laughs> <laughs> how, how important is this, right? I know that, listen, there's no smack talk or anything like that. There's elite levels of, of respect between the pair of you, but you both respect each other's capabilities inside once that door shuts. How important is this, the dance partner, for a night like this, where you're the, where you're the co-main event, it's 20,000 fans all going wild. The dance partner is just as important as yourself in order to bring the best out of yourself. Hmm. Would you go along with that? Yeah, hundred percent. You know, the better opponent you fight, the better you're going to bring it. You know, you got the every day you're sort of waking up thinking, oh, fine, damn, I've got to better put in some work. But you know, when you turn up sparring, you go with someone that's not, you don't respect them. Your sort of reactions aren't the same. You're not training the same. You ain't got that same push. But then you got that person. You're like, oh, I get sort of hurt today. You're going to show up, you're going to turn up, bring your A game, you know, you're pushing, you're working harder, instincts firing faster, all those things. 100%. Without the big name, there's no big fight, so, yeah. From your point of view, you've been here, done it, got the t-shirt with the big names, you've had those dance partners, you know that you can hit those levels, and I assume that you're excited to be able to hit those levels once again come Saturday. Yeah, like, it doesn't... Um you can look at any other, you, you can look at any high level like elite sport. I'm talking like major mainstream sport, like a tennis or something like that. You'll never see, um, who's a famous tennis player? Roger Federer. Maybe. You'll never see like Roger Federer sitting there saying a bunch of stuff about a guy he's playing, calling him, um, call him in names like those jackasses, <laughs> Sohudo and those jackasses coming to him, acting like complete clowns like that. That's some WWE stuff, and WWE's been around for what? A lot longer than the UFC, mm -hmm. and it's UFC is bigger than WWE. Like that's regardless. So there's obviously like a cap on going down that avenue and chasing. I feel like it's it only puts like a cap, and it's just puts limitations on your sport. If you're trying to make your sport a household sport, make your sport uh, accepted by the mainstream public, then no other mainstream sport like that. The professional athletes at the highest level of the sport carry themselves like clowns. Like they sit there, there's no need for them to say those kind of things. There's no need for them to be disrespectful for the guys they're going to play. Um, you don't see Andre Agassi sitting there calling his opponents a bunch of unnecessary names. It's, it's just, I feel like it's, I feel like it'll be phased out of our sport at some point, mm -hmm. and it won't be this need to like sell a fight. A fight will be sold on the appreciation of the sport and uh, the fans' like appreciation of the fighters. So it's a good start. <laughs> Come Saturday night, then I know that you're going to be wary of everything, as you just said. You can do everything yeah. extremely well. Are we going to see the best version of Arnold Allen on Saturday? I can hope so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a hundred percent. I've been preparing like anyone would that's fighting sort of a top opponent like Dan so yeah you know I've been waking up with that sort of tickle in my balls in the morning that I've got to put a little bit of extra work in you know a bit of extra spice on my training a bit of extra thought on everything I'm doing and yeah 100% it should bring out the best of me so I'm looking forward to that I'm looking forward to the challenge as well have you had that tickle in your balls um <laughs> I wouldn't quite describe it as a tickle <laughs> in my balls but definitely um like this moment here has brought out the best of me in, in the gym. And I feel like, uh, without a doubt, that like last couple of weeks of that training has just wrapped up and peaked. That in the last couple of weeks of my training camp have been the best that I've ever been. Mm -hmm. So if I, can, if I can take that, if I can take half of that inside the cage, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a good night for Dan Hooker. <laughs> we, we, as fans, 
see this particular fight as something that leads to a title eliminator at 145. That's what the majority of people would say. Mm. Is that how you're viewing this contest? Yeah, 100%. 100%. That's, you know, eight fight win streak, nine fight win streak, Dan Hook on the resume. Yeah. Yeah, title eliminator for sure. And from your point of view, Dan, been with the elites at, a, at 155, come down, fight, hope to beat Arnold, that then puts you in for a there's shot. No, there's, no, there's no argument that the winner of this fight fights backwards. There's, that's, that's silly. Hmm. <laughs> you, wouldn't find, you wouldn't find anyone that would um, argue against the winner of this fight fighting a top five fighter and, and positioning themselves for a title. I'm going to conclude it there because these two gentlemen are incredibly respectful towards each other. I told you we won't get the needle, but what we will get is one hell of a fight on Saturday night. So make sure you come and join us for Arnold Allen and Dan Hooker throwing down in the O2 Arena in London.